morning and welcome back to Baltimore. It's been a while since I've been home, probably a month. My last video was from Paris, which I was procrastinating on editing because my computer was down. And then to make my computer work, I set up this screen that was really big, very comfortable. And then in my head, I thought that if I finish this Paris videos, then I have to send my computer to New York. But I love this setup so much, so I don't want to change it. It was just so funny because I told myself that you can just keep the setup, fix the computer anytime you want. I'm in the process of so many things that have to be solved on the computer that I cannot afford to have it away. Today, I'm spending the entire day home. I'm not gonna go anywhere. I don't have any plans. The past few weeks have been violent practicing and violent teaching only. I had the wedding anniversary, which for that, we did a beautiful photo shoot, which I'm so grateful for. I think that the photographer captured us in such a cute way and I'm very grateful for it. Oh, I even got like a little book. Now my goal is for every year, I'm just gonna have a little book made and we'll see how that's gonna go another thing that was really cool that happened was my birthday i felt super special on that day and we got to spend it with family and then also with close friends and then the entire week was sort of filled with events now i'm back to doing a lot of diligent work a lot of violent work now it's a wednesday um it's currently 8 a.m and my uh practicing starts at 8 so i just wanted to quickly say hi let you know that today i'm gonna vlog and i'm gonna I'm gonna put a lot of videos together just to show you how my day goes like but yeah i'm just gonna be in this cozy apartment and work so sunny here i just want to say that my super professional outfit for the day um it's a set from Erie. Erie. I went there and they had sales. And I saw this set. And when I first saw this set, it was quite expensive. And then I went in, it was like 50% off. So I got one of these in beige. And then I loved it so much. And I kept telling them, oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. He got me three more sets. So this is my stay at home outfit while looking cute. And then practicing at home outfit while looking cute. So you might see me wearing the exact same thing over and over again. But I promise some of them are in the laundry. I'm not stinky. And now we are gonna go and we are gonna practice and I will show you some of my violin work and how it works and also I don't know where I picked this the sun is blinding me next time I'm picking a different spot Welcome to my office slash bedroom slash violin practice room uh, slash reading room <laughs> um, So I start the morning by planning what exactly I'm going to work out on that day Every time I have a different routine in terms of what concertos I'm working on or what excerpts I'm working on and I feel like what stays the same is the first things that I do which is tuning, playing my scales, I play all the scales, then I play all the arpeggios and then I play double stops so that's my ritual and after that I just go on with my day and play everything else. I realized that since I'm filming today, my practicing will be very um, sparse in a way. And I'm gonna write it down like that in my notebook. For example, my practice time starts at 8 a.m. But because I decided to film, then practicing started at 8.30 technically. So I'm always trying to be honest to myself in terms of how many hours I actually did on my instrument. Because when I look back, I want to know what kind of progress happened during what kind of time and what amount of time. Then I can be kind to myself. For example, if I'm setting myself to, you're gonna warm up for 30 minutes and you're gonna play this, this, and this, and this with high quality, which means going back and fixing if something is bad then i want to know maybe i only played one of those three things because you know i've been changing my camera around the house or something like that so it's just it's important to just be honest with yourself i mean with other people that's 
100% but also with ourselves <laughs> while I'm practicing uh, I take like a little break and I want to show you what exactly I have while practicing because it's quite a setup which a lot of these things first of all are shared with my husband who is also a musician and second of all it kind of it evolved over years to understand exactly what I need to be able to make progress and also have fun just enjoying my time with my instrument let's start first of all I have my instrument right <laughs> and my instrument is always in good shape it's always clean I always wipe it I always tell people please clean your instrument then we have the music stand and on my music stand I have my folder with music that's super organized I never have anything extra that I'm working on I need to have a clean understanding what exactly I'm working on so currently I have in my folder three orchestra auditions that I applied for and that I, I got invited to for those I have them divided in the closest ones and the farthest ones I have one two and three I'm obviously not saying which one did I apply for or which one I'm going to because that is something that I want to keep for myself and then if it ever ends up being successful I will definitely let me know and tell you but for now I just I love to keep that process that way we have like the first section of the folder that's for the first audition second and third for the first section of the folder I have all the excerpts for the first audition plus on top of them I have the versions that I've played before so I have a clean copy that they have given me and then I have an old copy of just the copy that I usually use for that specific excerpt so I never start a new unless that excerpt is actually something new that I'm playing for the first time which is um, an audition that's gonna have a lot of solos some of those solos will be something that I'm playing for the first time that would be a completely different approach it's not about polishing anymore you know it's about figuring out the fingering the bow everything that matches the style and then we go into polishing versus this first audition that I got so lucky I played everything before so now it's all about getting to that I, I don't like the word profession but that's what they're looking for you know just like to a level that when you play nothing is annoying and nothing bothers the year okay so that's the folder <laughs> next to the folder I have my iPad and I use that for tuning I use that for my arpeggios exercises like the warm-up that I do then on my desk I have metronome I don't recommend it I got it a while ago it's just not loud enough and I realized that I'm using my phone way more often than I'm using this metronome although it's still good it does the work maybe I don't know yet how it works because I hate this I hate reading the booklet. So far, the only thing that I wanted from it is be loud enough so I can practice and you cannot provide that. So I don't care how fancy you are. If you're not doing the basic, you can't talk about like fancy stuff. Another thing that I have next to me is the recording device, which I always have ready in case I have an excerpt that's, you know, the point that I want to record and send it to somebody for feedback. Currently, I have a few people in my life, probably five, that when I have a take on that, it's pretty good. And then I listen to it and it's hard for me to figure out what exactly I want to improve. You know, I can't be critical anymore about my playing or maybe I'm too critical about my playing. Then I send that to my um, people. <laughs> well, I have some teachers, but I also have some close friends and I have people that play different instruments. So I have always like variety of feedback and all of it helps. Next to it, on the desk, I have two notebooks. So I have my planner of the day. That's where I write down like everything that I'm doing during the day. If breakfast took a certain amount of time, I write it down. If you know, even doing dishes or taking a shower. I write it down everything because I often look back and I forget how much time it takes to get something done during the day. For example, like think about the hours that you can function properly. So for me, that would be 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's when I'm really good. And I go to sleep at like 10, 10, 30. So that's usually the time that I can be really good and violent. But then we have breakfast that takes a certain amount of time. And then we have lunch that takes a certain amount of time. Then I have workout that happens in between. So then that leaves me with like four hours. And then after workout, I'm a little tired. And then I have my lunch, so I have a little break. And then all of the work that happens after is just different kind of work. I feel a little bit tired. I'm saying this because writing down everything that I'm doing and like an increments of 30 minutes or an hour or 15 minutes has been helping me to stay on top of the game and know exactly where my time is going and again it's not for me to be critical with myself or to be very you know controlling but it's more about being kind and knowing 
what exactly works for me because I don't know yet. I don't know what it takes for me to get things done. I vaguely know, but I haven't quite researched and looked at it. The next day, I have another notebook. After every single excerpt or concerto that I'm doing, I write down what I want to improve tomorrow. I have set time for an excerpt, so I would say 30 minutes. You play this excerpt, you work on it, then you're done. Then you cannot return. You have to play something else. That way, I'm very critical with my time. I know that I also have time to play the other things during that day, so I never have huge break in between. Next to me, I have a keyboard. I was a gift from a few months ago. I use it when I'm learning an excerpt for the first time and it has a lot of inharmonic notes and it's really difficult for me to hear on the violin, especially if it's high position. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole setup. I'm gonna get back to practicing now. So I've been practicing for a while now. I wanted to share one more practice tip. If I have an excerpt that feels really difficult to play and I feel stuck, I play with a recording. For example, the excerpt at the moment that I find very difficult time to play on my own because there's so much, um, I'll show you with all my markings, but it's, it's this one here and it's smaller symphony number nine fourth movement i don't know if you can tell but there's so many uh, like in harmonic notes the keys change a lot and it's very slow so i find it difficult to just sustain the energy when i play by myself so that's why i always set up my recording and i always find the timing in all my excerpts all of them they have the timing written in so when i open up a recording i just know where exactly i can go so i don't have to listen to the whole thing every single time i will also to play only a little bit of this. It starts here. I don't know why I thought that it would be a good idea to share with you a recording because I obviously cannot do that on YouTube. If you want to know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna leave the link below with the timing. I'd recommend listening to this excerpt because it's gonna break your heart. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty. Anyway, so now I'm just gonna get my violin and I'm gonna play with the recording. And that way I'm going to focus more on what kind of bow can I use because there are a lot of half notes which obviously we cannot hold all of them if it's such a slow movement so then question is when can you change it when you cannot change it anyway i just hope that that helps um always practice with the recording if you feel like oh i can't practice alone today then practice with the recordings it, it can help a lot after an hour of practicing Mahler, this is the assignment that I have for tomorrow. I'll have to set up a metronome, then I'll have to sustain the bow and dynamics. So it's all about sustaining, which is really hard because the movement itself is very slow. Then get used to the fingerings. I reevaluated a lot of fingerings today. So then I'll have to erase what is not used. It's not wrong. That fingering is amazing as well, but we only have to have on the page what we need and nothing else. Sustain vibrato, that's gonna be a painful experience. I know already, but it's gonna be okay and it's doable. Then where and how we change the bow question mark because there's a lot of times when it's like a long note and then we have to sustain the bow, but then it's you have to change it and sometimes there are glisses and sometimes they are not. That would be a very hard decision to make. Then keep playing with the recording, but I put this as a last one. Why not keep playing with the recording? Now I'll move to a new excerpt. took a little break to work out and go on a little walk and now I'm on my way back and I'm gonna eat and I'm going to change back in my cozy outfit and I'll go back to practice. I teach today three students so because of that I'm trying to get 
as much work as possible done on my violin before I start teaching because after the lessons I'm usually so mentally tired that I can't really help myself practice uh, so that's the goal I'm gonna eat this very quickly, then I'm gonna go shower. For lunch is this salad, leftovers from yesterday. And I'm gonna have rice with some chicken. This is what I put on top of my rice to make it very tasty. And um, yeah, that will be my lunch, and then we're gonna go back to practicing. After my lunch, I went back to practicing, worked a little bit, and now I'm taking a break. And yeah, and after that, I'm gonna go again, have one more hour to go, and then I'm gonna have three hours of teaching. And after that, I'm hoping for one more hour of practicing, but I'm gonna see how I'm gonna feel because like I said before, after teaching, I'm kind of exhausted and I don't know what kind of progress I can do while I'm feeling that way. But what could be useful is that if during that hour, I kind of write down a plan for tomorrow, Tomorrow. we are close to 4 p.m. so I can see and I can tell that my body is slowly like giving up so my quality of practicing is declining a little bit but it doesn't mean that I can't do good work still if you are watching this video and you're a musician let me know what your practice routine is like I know it depends a lot and it can be very different but I'm still very curious like when you have to describe to someone your practice routine what do you usually say I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna practice again one more hour yay then um we're gonna do something else i have about five minutes left so i'm gonna make some decaf because i know that if i'll have some coffee even though it's decaf it's gonna you know just be a very comfort drink for me while i work so i'm gonna do that <laughs> just finished practicing i'm just gonna get ready i'm gonna change I'm gonna look a little more professional <laughs> and i'm gonna get ready for teaching it's always like this for me and every day i feel like i have to remind myself that the morning is the time when i can get most of the things done if i have to wake up earlier to get things done i should do that for example i wake up at 7 right now and 8 to 12 is my main four hours my goal is to always prioritize those four hours for violin only because i know that after that i just it's just so much more difficult to make decisions about timing decisions about the intonation decisions about the bone fingerings like all of these things and now i'm here with this i was trying to to work a little bit on my concerto romantic concerto it's just hard i'm gonna get ready for teaching then i'm gonna make a list of things that i didn't touch on today because after i teach lessons i'm gonna play through some of the things that i haven't worked on today just to have an, an idea of where they are and so then tomorrow i can go back to practicing them but yeah that's basically what there is again it's 
the next day. Yesterday, after I was done teaching, I was just so tired. I haven't touched my violin. I kind of planned what I want to work on today, so I decided that today I wake up, record everything. I'm gonna have all the excerpts together, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, doesn't matter because today I woke up and I practiced from 8 to 12, so that's four hours. And first excerpt, great. Second excerpt, I started recording and I realized that there are usually two spots in my Brahms excerpt that I get feedback from people telling me like, oh, this feels a little bit off and this feels a little bit off. I was trying to figure out what exactly is causing that. Why does it feel off? After one hour of working with metronome and like doing that careful work, I realized that I was adding one sixteenth note in a passage. And then after that, a little bit later, I was again adding a sixteenth note. That made me so sad and I was so frustrated because now I just have to practice it differently. So it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of doing it again. I had to drop the metronome marking and do a very slow and diligent work. So basically I did three hours on that excerpt and I still cannot play it back in tempo with the corrections. Because of that, I decided at 12 to not go work out because after I work out, I'm also very tired. Instead, I will just stay home. I took a shower, so that feels like a new day already. <laughs> and I'm going to have lunch and then at 1 p.m. I'm gonna go back and I'm going to do my work and my recordings. I'm just gonna say I'm very proud of the work that I'm making. It's not bad. It's just the level that people expect in auditions. It just can't be okay. It can't be fine. It can't be, oh, they know how to play the instrument. It has to be good, like really good. And it's true, it's very hard to get to that level, but I'm working on it. And I know that if every audition I'm getting better and better and better and better, and I'm not gonna give up. I understand they wanna have great players next to them. So my goal is to have perfect metronome marking. I have three excerpts that I'm just a little bit under it. Then I will revise all my intonation and then I'm gonna record things again. Today and tomorrow is just recording day. I'm practicing this way because like I mentioned, I'm more picky, but then I also can have recordings that I can send to my friends so they can give me feedback. Lastly, I put this outfit, which this vest is from Target. It's just, like super cute. And these pants are from Old Navy. After the shower, I felt like I need to look professional. I just need to look good. I need a good outfit on because my motivation and my uh, desire to work and be picky about my work has gotten very low. So trying all these things to get myself back into being hyped and excited about these, these practicing sessions, which will never end, you know? Signed up for this. Anyway, I hope your day is going well. Thank you for being here with me. And I'm pretty sure this will be the last day that I'm recording because I honestly don't want to take extra breaks and time to just stop i just want to be able to just completely focus leave my phone in the next room and just focus on my practicing get better and do a good job in my audition i'm gonna go eat and then we are gonna go practice <laughs> six hours of practicing i ended up going on a little walk i think it's so important to remind myself about the world outside of my room all the details all the birds and all the nature and even the waves of the water i feel like it sort of helps me take of my mind of the work that I have to complete then it helps me recharge for the next day. 